are you? How you doing there, man? Good. Great to see you. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, absolutely. We're just going to wait maybe a couple more minutes for people to come in and get going. I love, the, I love the, what's it like a hockey shirt or a football shirt that, that UDB is? Um, I guess it's sort of a hybrid. It's a little, you know, summer jersey that we did for, uh, for the drum course that we sponsored uh, each year. And so we do, do one sort of for each, uh, each version of each drum corps. And so this is the Blue Coats one because I still teach there. And so, uh, so we have them in sort of different colors. And, uh, and now people think that we're selling these. So they're like asking like, hey, UDB is yeah. great. But like, where can I get the jersey from? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we got to all ask for our swag, you know. <laughs> well, you know, send me your shirt size, you know. I, I can, uh, <laughs> can make it happen. And hey, uh, the I, it was a couple nights ago. <clears throat> um, I think it was the beginning of the week. You did a presentation in South America. Yeah, Congr I, I that that was rough. I mean, because I <laughs> we were talking, he was like slowing it down. And then he had to translate, and I was just like, Josh is earning his his uh, he's earning it right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. You know, it's um, we've we've actually uh, over the years we've had this really, really unique interest um, that's been expressed from teachers and students in South America to say like, hey, we want to learn how to do marching band better or whatever it is. And we, we see this, but we don't know how it works. And we don't have, we don't perform on a traditional football field. And so um, it, it was very cool to connect with those guys. And they've done a great job with um, bringing in different professionals from throughout the activity. Um, you know, whether it's a, a brass caption head or a visual person or a color guard person, um, it was cool to be featured on their, their technology week. Wow, that's very cool. Well, I yeah. caught a little bit of that uh, after dinner and uh, transitioning into the evening uh, uh, sitcoms uh, that were going <laughs> on uh, Netflix. So but, uh, anyways, you ready to get started? Yeah, let's dive in. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, again, this is Dr. Mike Phillips, um, the Director of Athletic Spans here at uh, Campbell University and Assistant Professor in Music. Thank you for joining us in, on our uh, Inspired to Inspire series. Uh, it's been a three days of workshops. We are on day two, and we're in the last two hours of day two. Uh, uh, make sure if you... Uh, uh, it's not too late to register. Uh, to have your friends uh, register uh, at our website, and uh, we will definitely. I will definitely make sure that they get the link for day three. Uh, day three is uh, full of color guard, uh, tuba, flute, uh, jazz. Uh, Professor Stamp is going to be here uh, here doing uh, conducting and uh, composer spirit, uh, and then we're going to bring uh, Mr. Freddie Green back. Josh, you know Mr. Freddie Green. Man, I love that guy. Yep, and he, he and I are going to collaborate on effective sectional prep uh, tomorrow. And at the same time, we're going to also have one by our own Kayla Clark on effective use of social media. So we have a great last day plan. So uh, make sure you uh, get in contact with your friends. Please have them register. So it's an opportunity for us uh, to send them the information uh, that we collect in the three days. Uh, so uh, let's get going. It is a pleasure uh, to introduce uh, one of my amazing uh, friends, colleagues, and I tell you, I, I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but this guy is a mentor when it comes to uh, what I know in pieware and drill writing. Uh, so I either apologize or praise you uh, based on the drill that's presented. So uh, well, John, we'll, we'll take a look at it and I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is not only an amazing uh, 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 tuba player, uh, he is a, he's a, a composer, an arranger. Uh, his background is uh, not only in education, uh, on and off the field, in the classroom. Uh, he's a recording engineer. Uh, he has experience uh, not only uh, marching, I believe, with the cadets, uh, but he has worked with uh, several DCI groups. Uh, he's not only approaching and making game-changing things with uh, UDB in America, uh, it's all over the world. Uh, uh, this past week, was it this past week? Uh, it's, this week is like a blur. Uh, he was uh, doing a conference with uh, a group in South America, and I know he's been over in, uh, uh, in, in Japan, I think it was, in the last couple of year, <clears throat> years as we've caught up. 
I, I don't know what more to say about this guy. He is one of my idols, and I, it's a pleasure to have him. He's going to be doing two sessions with us, uh, just so you know today. Uh, here at 3 o'clock as we get started, he's going to really explain what UDB app is and what it can do for us. And then we're going to flip it at 4 o'clock on using it uh, from the student perspective. Uh, so both are invaluable for our students and directors. Uh, directors, if you want your CEU credit, make sure that you put your name, school, and state in the chat, and I will be collecting that and making sure that uh, you can get your CEU credit for participating with us today and all three days. Without further ado, from the uh, bottom of my heart, I, uh, it's an honor per to uh, introduce to you Josh Gall, uh, also Associate Director of Man at the University of Texas at Austin. Cool. Thanks so much. Um, thank you, everybody, for, for having me and for your time. Um, just a, a quick little intro um, before we sort of dive in. I'm going to share my screen and just sort of jump right into UDB so I can uh, share, share a little bit about that with you guys. Um, um, as, as Mike said, I'm a, I'm a music educator first and foremost, uh, taught high school band in the Virginia area, um, and then um, now I'm entering in year six. Um, at the University of Texas at Austin, where I teach, um, of course, the Longhorn Band, uh, teach classes in conducting and marching band techniques, and then in graduate wind literature in the spring. Um, and then uh, I'm also the co uh, one of the co-founders of Ultimate Drillbook. Um, so really in our time today, I just want to introduce um, so some of the features about um, like how Ultimate Drillbook works, why we have built it that way, and how it could help your program, uh, whether we're in a regular time, if you will, or uh, you know, sort of the um, interest in fall like we all have ahead, uh, ahead of us. Um, at any point, it looks like the, the chat is active, so feel free to jump in there. Um, and Mike, I don't know if, if people are unmuting themselves and asking questions, but at any point during this, everybody, um, you know, don't feel like this is overly formal. If you just want to chime in and say, hey, Josh, let, let me just ask you about this, this thing. Um, I would love to answer your questions. Um, in the session that I'm going to be doing um, in a little less than an hour, I'm going to sort of dive into a few more specifics for some student learning um, and student leadership tactics as it relates to pedagogy in the rehearsal. Um, and I'll cover a little bit of that now, but um, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you guys so that you can, um, so that you can sort of see what I'm looking at. So give me just a second to pull this up. And maybe Mike, just let me know when you're, when you're seeing my screen. I am seeing your screen loud and clear. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So, um, what UDB is, is it's a mobile application um, that works on iPhones, or I'm sorry, iOS and Android devices. Um, and it's a program now that um, we've got a few hundred thousand users who are using this across the country. We have just launched in Japan uh, as well. <clears throat> and um, this is for, this is a tool for both teachers and for students. Um, and what we're looking at right now is our home screen. I'm, I'm showing you this so that you can understand sort of what our goal is with UDB. Um, our goal is really to take the things that you do inside of a, you know, a standard two hour rehearsal. And we wanna to try to make those things better for you. We wanna to try to make them easier for you, more organized um, and really more, um, uh, more engaging for the, the time that you do have with the students. And we wanna to try to take some management things off of your plate so that you could focus on the, you know, the, the task at hand, which is teaching and engaging and spending time with the students. So I'll just give you a quick overview uh, over some of the management things that we do inside UDB app, uh, just because uh, there are some really exciting new releases that we have um, pushed out in the recent version of UDB app Pro, which just launched on July 1st. Um, so um, initially, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to be able to um, simplify the system that allowed for directors to uh, take attendance. And so I'll just show you, I'll show you a sort of a, a quick snapshot of some of these things and then we'll dive into the drill. But the attendance thing is something that's really excited a lot of people recently. And I, first and foremost, as a band director, I'm also excited about that because no matter where you are, uh, that seems to be like the, the Achilles heel for all of us. So the way that this works um, is I'm signed in as a director right now. Um, and I've just connected this to a Google account. Um, so a free Google Calendar account. 
And um, I'm going to create an event just so you guys can see sort of how this works. And I'm just going to call this maybe woodwind sectionals. And what's neat about this is that uh, because the event itself is going to require some kind of a location, because we want people to be able to check into that, just like they would in real life, you need to be on the field or you need to be in the practice, you know, on the practice field or whatever it might be. We use the GPS on your phone that's built into everybody's device to specify, okay, we want people to be able to check in on this, you know, on this date at this location. So I'm just choosing this location. I can set, as you saw, the geofence where I want all of the performers to be within. And then what's cool about this is that in the background of UDB, we build the hierarchy of your ensemble. So this event might only pertain to altos, um, you know, this is a woodwind sectional, and this is, of course, just a, a mock ensemble, as you can see our superhero names over here on the right side. Uh, but if I wanted the staff to be a part of this, uh, or if I wanted maybe all marchers to be a part of this, I could select and choose those uh, invitees. And what's nice about that is it shows up just on their device for them only, because all of us know as band directors, it's very easy for our calendars to become sort of overly robust. And there's, a, there's events for the color guard and then for the staff and then for the directors. And then maybe for you know, a small ensemble that's gonna go and play a special gig or whatever it might be. So we try to manage that and keep that easier for everybody. And you can do all of the normal things you can do on any calendar application, choose the start and end times. Is it a recurring event? Um, you know, do I wanna add any special notes like make sure you bring your water bottle or you need to, uh, you know, this is what the apparel uh, or attire is for that event. So I'm gonna create this event just to sort of show you what the next part of this is. Again, this is all under the heading of, we wanna to try to help you manage your ensembles better so that you can focus more on the teaching part. So I'm gonna go into the attendance uh, part of UDB now, and you see the event that I just created called Woodwind Sectionals. And in real time, as people arrive in that geofence location, they would then manually check in and say, hey, I'm here at rehearsal. And then we see their attendance record. Are they absent? Are they tardy? Or are they present based on the attendance parameters that you set up? And that keeps a live updating list, which you can export at any time. You could take that attendance data send it out as a CSV file. You could email it to the student and they can see the timestamp of all of those kinds of things uh, of every event that they've been invited to. So that way you've removed the discrepancy of, no, I was there on time or no, I arrived late, whatever it might be. And the students can also see this information. So they can see, okay, look, I've, I've been tardy four times. I've been present nine times and I've got three absences. So again, in the interest of trying to sort of make things uh, easier for you as directors and for students, um, the attendance feature inside UDB App Pro is, um, has been sort of highly requested, and so we're excited to, to launch that. I'll show you one other sort of um, rehearsal management related thing, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about the drill part of UDB, which is really sort of our, the core feature of things. Inside the settings, we've created something called Smart Access. And what this does is it allows me as a, as a director to limit who in the ensemble can have access to the internet during rehearsal. So for people who are concerned about, well, I, I'm, I want my kids to have access to this drill terminology or technology, but I'm worried about them having you know, access to their, to their phones for other reasons. You as a director, you can enable and choose like, okay, I don't want my alto saxophones or I don't want my whatever it might be to uh, have access to the internet. So when they open up UDB, they actually have to go into airplane mode to access the drill. So that's been um, another feature that has been really helpful with the, um, the onboarding process of, um, of getting people using UDB if they're concerned about their students being on their phones. And that's something that you can toggle quickly at any point by just turning this on or off before or after a rehearsal starts. And then the students have to just be using UDB um, when they're on the field. So this is, again, all under the heading of, these are things built to help manage the rehearsal, but truth be told, we as directors, we need to make sure that we are doing the right things about uh, regarding the rehearsal with moving it along and keeping the students motivated. Um, and what we have sort of faced before, you know, regardless of what system you've used, if you use maybe coordinate sheets, which I think a lot of us have used for many, many years, uh, or drill charts, the alternative is, okay, I'm gonna hand you this as a director and then I want you to go set up this page and then yes, maybe you can refine a couple of things on your own, but then just sort of stand there and wait until I tell you if you're right or wrong. 
Um, so we thought and we really believed that there is a, a time and a place and a way for students to become engaged and more self-sufficient. And that's really what the core of UDB as a drill learning product is focused on. Before I dive into this one quick thing, just so that you know, UDB syncs directly with Pyware. So you don't have to do anything to get the drill into UDB other than either yourself if you're the drill writer or if their drill writer is using Pyware, they just go to the file menu, hit export UDB app, wait about five seconds and then everybody in the drill has that latest update. So no matter what you've been doing before this, whether it's coordinate sheets or drill charts, we all know what kind of time and money that takes. We've actually just completed a study. Yeah, question, yeah? Yeah, and, and again, maybe to rehash it, if you went over it real quick uh, before you move on, do, do they need internet access? Do they need Wi-Fi access, Bluetooth access for all this to work up to this point, like for the attendance part? And as we get in, because we all know a football field isn't the greatest Wi-Fi area. Sure, sure. Yeah, so um, the, you, you do need some kind of connectivity, um, whether that's Wi-Fi or just your cell phone data plan. Um, and everything that we have created um, sort of that relies on any kind of internet connectivity um, really is, has been severely sort of scrutinized so that that way we're not eating up your battery and your data and those kinds of things. So you just need Wi-Fi or cell phone connectivity just for the initial download um, of these things or to check in. But once you're inside the drill, you don't need, um, you don't need to have constant connectivity. Once it's downloaded to your device, it stays available offline. So, um, yeah, so back to the Pyware piece, we, uh, we sync directly with Pyware. So whatever your drill writer has inside Pyware, whether it's props, certain colors, certain labels, the audio file, all of those things come over directly to UDB. And that file itself um, is smaller than the size of a file, like the, of a picture that you would text somebody. So um, as far as data usage and you know bandwidth inside your phone, um, and taking up space um, in storage, it's really not a concern. Um, so those are some of the things that people like are, that people initially um, ask at the, the beginning parts of this. Um, and we've done that really just to help streamline the experience of it that way. The students who are a freshman who maybe just gotten a, a cell phone for the first time or whatever it might be, they're not taxing their parents' data plan or those kinds of things. So it makes it very, very easy. And if you have access to uh, like school iPads, or if you're a one-to-one -one school, those kinds of things. Those are all um, things that allow for a student just to sign in and be on any device that has connectivity just for that moment. And then once they're in their account, they've got access to all of their music and drill that they put in there. So let me show you a little bit about what UDB is from a, as far as a teaching tool. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what, what features we have in there, um, why we built them and sort of how they're used inside of the rehearsal setting so that that way we can all think about, okay, cool. Well, this is how we normally rehearse. Uh, so let me maybe just add this idea to our, our rehearsal protocol. So what you'll see here is we've got um, a series of songs that we've, that have been uploaded to our account, right? And each ensemble has their own account, right? So Campbell University has an account, UT Austin has their own account, the Bluecoats have their own account. And the students are tied to just the drill in that particular account. So I'm a director in this test ensemble right now. And I'm just going to open up the fourth movement of this show. And on the surface level, we want to be able to engage with the drill and sort of understand what it's supposed to look like in advance. So we can do that by just pressing play and watching the animation. Now, if you guys were sitting next to me, you would hear the audio playing, uh, but because I'm sharing my screen, it's not, it's not sharing that with you right now. But anything, like I said earlier, anything that's in Pyware, any of the audio files that you guys get from Finale or Sibelius or from your, you know, your show designer, um, all of that comes over and syncs directly with that drill automatically for you. Now, what was important for us is that we wanted to build a teaching tool that was based in educational philosophy and with sound pedagogical uh, cornerstones. So um, instead of us just displaying the drill, which is really what you know the students have been sort of engaging with up to this point, it was important for us to build specific teaching tools inside of this that help encourage the students to think creatively about their live assessment, right? 
So at the surface level, what we're looking at is we, of course, saw the animation. As you can see in the top left corner, we see the page number, we see the number of counts. But say, for example, we want to tap on a performer. Again, I'm signed in as a director. And so I'm able to see that performer's path information, where they were, which is the red line, where they are, which is the yellow dot, and where they're going, which is the green line, right? So as you guys are probably already thinking about, for the students to know that path information, is this a straight line path? Is this a curved path, right? Automatically sort of gives them a couple of steps ahead of uh, the kind of information that could be really helpful for them, not only in the cleaning process, right, but also in the learning process from the very first rep. Now you'll see that when we tap on a performer, this information updates. So I can tap on any performer and pull up this information. And you'll see the additional information that's at the top of the screen now. Of course, we see the page number, we see the counts. If I tap on counts, I'll also see the measure numbers that come over from Pyware. So if the drill designer inputs that in their production sheet, then it's gonna show up in, inside UDB app for all of the performers and for the directors. So of course, that's really helpful information. No longer do you have to sort of think we're just in visual rehearsal or we're just in music rehearsal. If, 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 as soon as you can tie those two things together, that can be really, really helpful because now you're saying, all right, cool, we're going to go to page 40. How many counts is that, everybody? Eight counts. What's the measures of the music? Measure 17 through 18. Cool, right? So you're just, you're adding in more elements um, and further engaging their, their thought processes for, you know, what's to come when we add the music to the drill. The next thing over is you'll see X counts, which stands for crossing counts. So we calculate and display when performers cross the yard lines, which, as we all know, is an incredible tool traditionally for cleaning, which we really don't get to sort of until late, like later in the season. But really from rep number one now, we can understand what that crossing count or how that crossing count is relevant. So I'm just going to like zoom in a little bit more. And so we can see in this red path, this person crosses the 45 yard line on count seven, right? And because we know that from the first rep, that's a great way for us to calibrate our step size right from the very beginning. Because again, the alternative is we're just gonna do a couple reps. Was it, was it too large of a step size? Was it too small of a step size? Did I not take a, a straight, straight path or whatever it might be? So the students have that information from the very beginning in addition to when I tap on crossing counts, you'll see that it also displays their step size. So of course, most of us are doing, you know, our drill, or I'm sorry, our technique um, uh, program, you know, an eight to five, a 12 to five, a 16 to five, right? And so the students have some kind of reference point for what that muscle memory feels like. And in this example, they already, they can see before they've even learned this set, okay, I need, I've got to cross the yard line on counts seven, and this is a 6.75 to five step size. Cool, so I know it's gonna be slightly larger than an eight to five, not quite a six to five. So again, they've got that information from the beginning and that can be really, really helpful for them. And then of course, in the top right corner, the thing that you've been looking at already is the coordinate, right? So we, we calculate and display the coordinate, of course, for where they are in the drill. And all of this comes over directly from Pyware. So if you use certain terminology, side one and side two, or if you say side A and side B, or right side and left side, or field hockey house and football stadium, whatever it is, those, that terminology comes over into UDB. And we're seeing that display as a coordinate here. And then just like everything else, I could tap on it. When I tap on this, I now see a drop down or sort of like a spreadsheet style version of all of the drill for that performer. Right, so I can see the page number, the measures in the music, the step size, and then the coordinate. And what's neat about this view in particular is that I can still tap on any of these things at the top and pull up the information that pertains to that particular set. So for example, one of the things that we have our section leaders do um, at ET every fall is before we learn the next set, we ask, we have them ask the students in their section, all right, next set, who has a larger step size? Who has a smaller step size? Who holds, right? So it's, it gives them some more ownership in that process, but it also allows for them to sort of um, conceptual con or contextualize, you know, where they are in the grand scheme of things. Okay, cool. I was just coming from a, 
you know, a nine and a half to five to a hold. And then I'm going 12 and a quarter to five after that. So I'm, I'm understanding larger step size, more energy is required, smaller step size, lesser energy is required. Um, and that can be really, really helpful for the students, especially those who are sort of driven by numbers, right? We understand that all students learn different ways. Um, uh, myself, you know, I'm, I'm a visual, um, visual learner and in some ways I'm a kinesthetic learner. So for me to be able to touch things and learn and smell and taste them, you know, those are the kinds of things that sort of help me experience something better. And we want people to do that the same um, or similarly here. We want them to be able to get engaged with this and tap this and say, okay, cool. This is what things look like for page 43, 44, et cetera. Now, at, up to this point, we've been looking at things page by page. But if I wanted to break things down even further, you'll see on the far right side of the screen, there's a little C button. There's like the play plus minus and then the C button. And the C button stands for counts. So if I tap on that, I now go into count mode and you'll see that my coordinate in the top right corner turns yellow and I'm looking at the drill right here. So I'm just moving it into this part of the screen. And when I hit minus or plus, you'll see I'm moving forward or backwards count by count. All right, so this is another thing where if there's ever some kind of a discrepancy in the rehearsal, we say like, okay, guys, we just, there's something that's happened in this transition, whether it's a pass through issue or a path issue, or, you know, um, a thing where maybe two performers sort of intersect for just a moment, you want them to be able to have that as a reference point. For them to be able to break things down count by count, that can be really, really helpful, especially if you ever use your halfway point as a measure of cleaning a drill, right? Which I think probably all of us have, have done at some point. Okay, cool, this is a 10 count move. Let's stop on our halfway point. And before, we just sort of had to guess where that is. I mean, we were guessing approximately, but now the students can actually set that up with accuracy. So they know exactly where they're supposed to be. They maybe see their relationship to other people around, uh, around themselves. And so again, this is all with the intent of allowing the students to be more engaged and for them to have more information during the rehearsal, therefore requiring us as directors to talk less, right? <laughs> which, is what we, <laughs> which is what we want to be able to happen. All right, cool. So that's the gist of like what we see and like how things look inside the app initially. You can still see I'm on count five of 10, so that's the middle of a transition. But we've built in a couple of other things um, that are specifically with the intent of, we wanna help manage the rehearsal from a, you know, when you're first meeting the students, you know, and, and the, the first rehearsal goes something like, all right, uh, yellow shirt, uh, blue hat, move this way. And, uh, you know, blue shoes, move this way. So we've built in a, a live and updating cast list for directors and for students. And what does that mean? I'm going to go into my settings real quick. I'm just going to tap on the top right corner, go to the settings, and you'll see there's something here called the cast list. So I can see each performer and who they're signed into, right? And so when the students sign into the app, um, it's, and then they open up a, a drill file, the next thing that it asks them to do is choose their performer symbol and their label. So we can see here, Spider-Man is baritone one, Green Lantern is Baritone 2, Superman, Guard 1, etc. Now, multiple people can sign into the same dot. So if you have, you know, an alternate situation, uh, or if you have somebody who's just learning an, an alternate spot for some reason, um, any, at any time, anybody can sign into another dot um, or another performer. And um, what, where this really comes into play is certainly you can go into the cast list and you can see this information about where uh, who the students last were. But what's really cool about this is when we go back into the drill, you'll see that when I tap on a performer who is signed in, you'll see that their name and their picture pops up in the top right corner of the screen. All right. So again, this allows you to save some time. You know, unfortunately, it probably means that the days of like creative nicknames based on what students are wearing is probably going slowly out the window, right? Uh, but 
you know, now you can just tap on any performer who is signed in. So we saw that B1 was signed in. I can tap on B2 and you'll see that their name and their picture pop up. And if a student hasn't signed into that dot, then you'll see that there's no name and picture that pop up in there. All right. So again, that's something that's really built to help manage those kinds of things. And if you think about this, when you're in a rehearsal setting and maybe you're saying like, is that a whole or is this a bad interval? Um, you know, you can go through and tap on this. And because you have the live attendance record, if you tap on a person and no one has signed into that dot that day, then you know that that person's absent from rehearsal, right? Or if you need to, you know, say like, okay, look, this is a hole. We need somebody to fill this hole for rehearsal. You know, Mike, would you please, can you sign into baritone two real quick and then just jump in and learn that drill, right? So again, the alternative to that would be, all right, somebody like just stay between those two people and don't hit anybody, right? That's what we, we used to do. Uh, maybe we still do that in, in some instances. Um, but, um, you know, the opportunity now is anybody can access that information and we want them to be able to pull up that, that drill information quickly, right? I'll show you a couple of other sort of features within UDB that are related to the teaching process. Um, and then I'll pause there after that um, just to answer some questions. So um, you guys can unmute yourself or throw them in the chat and maybe Mike, you can ask me uh, those kinds of things. Um, I'm not seeing the chat right now because I'm screen sharing, but um, I'll pause in just a moment after, after I show you <clears throat> one other sort of key feature that's um, really, really helpful in the teaching process and the organization process. So this has become um, sort of one of my fa <clears throat> favorite features for a number of reasons, excuse me. <clears throat> um, we've created the ability for, um, for users and for directors and for staff to isolate specific sections of the band. And we, the way that that's done is um, and by creating what we call a custom view. And that custom view allows for you as a director to say like, for example, I would like to, you know, of course I wanna be able to see everybody in the band like I see here, or I wanna maybe see just one particular section. So you'll see when I click on custom view one, I'm now seeing the band, but from the performer's perspective, or maybe I wanna just look at a certain section. And so I'm gonna go into my settings, go to show hide sections. And maybe in this example, I wanna see just the mellophones. So I'm just unchecking the performer symbols that come over directly from Pyware. And I'll turn off the props as well, just so we can sort of hyper-focus on the performers, right? And you'll now see there's the full field, but I'm now just seeing the mellophones. And what's neat about this is that I can still, you know, watch the animation. I can still hear the audio. And at any point, if I want to, if I can say like, okay, here's, here's where the issue is. I'm going to pause this, right? So mellophones, are we all in the right spot? Yeah, cool. This is great. So let me just look and see what this looks like with the full band. Go back to the full band. And we're on that same count but now looking at the full band. All right, cool. So everybody's in the same spot. We're good. Let me switch back over and see just the mellophones. Okay, cool. We, we're sorted out now, All right? So you have the ability to switch back and forth, you know, with just two clicks by, uh, with, with the, uh, the possibility of isolating just certain sections. So for me, when I'm teaching from the tower um, <clears throat> and whether I'm running the rehearsal or if I'm sort of, being the secondary director at a rehearsal, which means that we are, uh, the way that we sort of work things is we have a director who's managing the pace of rehearsal and then we have a director who is uh, essentially cleaning the band, which we do just through walkie talkies that we're sharing with our staff um, and with certain section leaders. So we can say, guys, can you address this? Can you address this? Um, let us know if you need another rep on that, those kinds of things. And so, what I'm doing inside of our rehearsal is um, I've, I've got three views set up. The first one, which shows the full band. The second one, which shows just the brass and woodlands. And then the third one, which shows the percussion and the color guard. So that allows me to sort of just sort of hyper-focus on that section. And we ask our staff and our section leaders to do the same thing. We want them to be able to set up a view that shows just their section so that they can sort of mostly worry about that, but at any point still switch back over and see um, see the full band's drill. I'll show you one other like little pro tip, if you will, 
uh, and then I'll pause for some questions. I'm gonna go back to this other view, which is showing the full band from the performer's perspective. Um, and one quick aside, by default, when you're signed in as a director, it shows the drill from the, from the director's perspective. For students, when they sign in, it shows it from their perspective. So that that way, when they see that path information, they can see exactly where they came from, where they are and where they're going to next, right? But it shows it from their perspective. So when we learn drill, the students are holding their phone because th that way it's, it's all relative to the act, exact path that they're gonna take. So I'll show you one other quick little um, pro tip for custom views um, that a good friend of mine who I teach blue coats with does uh, particularly with the color guard um, each summer. So I'm gonna go back into my settings and you'll see sort of as I scroll through this, some of the different setting options. Uh, we just looked at show slash hide sections where we removed everybody in the drill except the mellophones. But you, I'm gonna scroll down to where it says performer colors. Now by default, we bring in all of the colors from Pyware. So if the drill writer uses blue for brass and purple for woodwinds and black for percussion and pink for color guard or green for color guard, whatever it is, all of that information comes over into UDB. But if you wanted to be able to customize that, or if you have a student who needs that to be customized based on the device that they're using, or if they have some kind of vision impairment, we want them to be able to customize those things, or we want you to be able to customize those things so that essentially you can highlight just one particular section. So what I'm gonna do is, because we used mellophones earlier, I'm gonna change the color of all of the symbols to a light gray, except for the mellophones, right? And then for the mellophones, I'm gonna make them a nice orange Campbell University color, right? Snares light gray. Thanks for picking the right orange, by the way. You're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now when I go back into the drill, you'll see, I can still see everybody, right? But now, just the mellophones are highlighted, right? And so that way you as a director or you as a staff member, you can say like, all right, cool, I'm seeing everything, but I wanna just highlight a particular section so that that way, as I'm just watching the drill, I can see at any point, you know, where the students are that I'm sort of most responsible for, right? Um, and these are all, all things, all views that you can customize, as you saw, you know, pretty quickly. So one rehearsal, you might be working with the trumpets or you wanna be hyper-focused on the trumpets, right? So I'm just gonna go in and customize that view and just, I wanna be able to see everybody, but I want the trumpets to be red because that's code red, look at the trumpets, right? You know, or whatever it might be. Um, so being able to do those kinds of things inside of the rehearsal, again, are really geared, on, geared towards how can we help um, what, and what can UDB do to help organize uh, the flow of information um, and sort of uh, engagement inside of the rehearsal. So I'll pause there real quick um, and just sort of see, see if there are any, are any questions at all. Um, and I can, I can show a couple of other little things inside this, but I wanted to sort of gauge where we are and see what kinds of questions people had uh, or see what things I could elaborate on. Yeah, we have a question from Andrew. Uh, it says, uh, can you see the show play in the app and all the movements together. Does that make sense? Or Andrew, can you turn your mic on and maybe explain that if Josh doesn't understand that? Yeah, Andrew, if, if you could if you could unmute and just elaborate, that would be helpful. Okay, what I mean is uh, like, just like fully playing out, like you can actually see everything coming together. Um, yeah, sorry, like, you mean like, for, like, for example, if I press play at the beginning of this me? file, yes, yeah. Yeah, so, um, are you, are you talking about like the, the entirety of the show, like so movement one, movement two, movement three, movement four, or just the entirety of the song, um, and it, it just plays by itself? Uh, practically, yeah, both. Got it, okay. Yeah, so it works, um, as you can see in this example right now. Um, you can play the entirety of a single drill file or a single song, um, but there's not a way inside the app for it to go from song one to song two to song three. You know, if I, if you wanted to do that, you would just 
stop the drill and go to the next song. All right, so movement five, I'll download it real quick. And then I open this up and then there's movement five. So they don't play sort of continuously from one to the other if that's what your question was. Um, yeah, but yeah. It, it will play in its entirety from the beginning to the end of that song, whatever that is, you know, so like you might have a drill file that only has five pages. That's maybe a transition from, you know, the ballad to the closer or whatever it might be. Um, so whatever, however your drill writer has organized that um, is how it plays here. Now, the exception would be if the drill writer or if you as the drill writer puts the entire show in one Pyware file which then it could play, you know, from start to finish. Uh, I'll have a couple couple questions here that might be brought up. And if anybody else has a question, maybe put an X in the chat and then I'll see your name pop up and uh, you can either use, you know, use your mic or like I said, put it right in the chat. Uh, Josh, um, I, I know it'd probably be cumbersome to go through that process, but what is the process uh, of entering the information in because we're talking about two two sources of info here Pyware and Finale that you've brought up and I guess another part of that question is uh, this will only be as good as that of this will only be as effective as the, uh, the quality of the drill that's put into it too sure sure yeah so I'll, t I'll talk briefly about um the i guess sort of the setup process um and you know and sort of the connectivity of these things so um so traditionally if you're writing drill you would take the audio file you know whether it's you know an audio file from the publisher that you could download or from the arranger who sent you the finale wave file or the sibelius wave file and then you export that or I'm sorry, you import that into Pyware and then you sync that up with the drill. For those of you who are drill writers, you know exactly what I'm talking about, where you just, you queue up at the very beginning of the drill file, you tap the space bar a million times that line up with each count of that drill, um, and then you're done and that's now synced. When you export that drill file from Pyware into UDB, it brings over everything. So it brings over the drill and it brings over the audio. So once you're inside UDB or if you're the director, you don't have to do anything at that point, right? So it's really incumbent on the drill designer to just sync those two things together and then bring those over to UDB. <clears throat> One question that you were, I don't know if you were alluding to this, Mike, but I'll, I'll share this because I haven't gone over it yet. Yep. But the way that UDB, the way that you sign up for UDB um, is, um, you know, oftentimes directors will ask us and they'll say, um, hey, like, you know, if I don't know which performer is going to sign into what dot, or if I don't know all of my kids yet, you know, how do I put that information into UDB? The short answer to that is that you don't have to do any of that as a director, right? So the way that it works is that the students all just download UDB from the app store, which is a free download uh, for them. You pay for licenses, but the, the actual download is free. And then what they do is they click on sign up so that they can create a new account and then once they've created an account they plug in their name their instrument their role so maybe i was the section leader of the trumpets or i'm the drum major or maybe i'm a staff member so they create all of those parameters they create a login for themselves using you know, an email and a password that of course are sec uh, securely stored um, <clears throat> on our servers and then they upload a picture of themselves um, if they like um, and then that's where we build the cast list from. So we, in the background, build the hierarchy of the ensemble for you. <clears throat> so you as a director don't have to input any of that information. The students do that. And it, you know, for a band of 30 or a band of 800, you know, it only takes about 45 seconds for everybody to get signed up. And then our server manages that for you. So <clears throat> uh, once they're signed up, then they're connected to your ensemble and you don't have to do anything from that point. So that's sort of the management part of how do I create accounts or how do I connect Pyware to EDB app? Did I sort of, sort of answer your question, Mike? Yeah, and then uh, just finishing it, what, what is the, for us drill writer folks, uh, I think this would be inform, uh, informative for those who are thinking about it. Once you write the, 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 the Pyware file, what's the file that transfers over? 
Yeah, so in the background, Pyware creates what's called a, <clears throat> a .3D UDB file. Now, what's cool about it, um, our, what's cool about our integration with Pyware is once you're done with the drill, whether it's the full movement or just an update or I fixed this thing for the color guard or I've added three more pages, um, all you do is save it and then go file, export, and that connects directly to our server. So you don't have to do anything with the files. Um, uh, so you go file, export, it's already got your information for that particular ensemble. And you can see all of the songs that are listed in that ensemble's account. As a drill writer, you hit export, take a sip of your coffee uh, or whatever's close by. <laughs> and, then, um, uh, and then you wait about five seconds and then everybody's got that drill update. So for example, this is, this is maybe a little bit more pertinent in the college world, but um, we've hear, heard from high school band directors talk about this quite a bit where they've been at rehearsal, they've been learning more drill faster because the students are more engaged and all of those things, which has been really great. Um, but then they reach out to the drill designer and say like, hey, we, you know, we've got 30 more minutes before lunch. Can you send us two more pages of drill? And while the students are getting water, they can import that drill and then the students just reset and go and learn those new pages of drill. For us at the university, I'll stop sharing my screen real quick just because I'm not sure you guys are seeing me. Um, at the university, it was an instance last year where um, uh, on our last rehearsal evening, which is Thursday before Saturday games, um, where we got notification that we needed to do sort of an emergency spell out uh, on the field to honor uh, one, some, a member of our board of regents who had just passed. Um, and so, and during the rehearsal, I just opened up my laptop, did a quick spell out, hit export, got the students to go get water, download the new drill file, and then we went and learned that new drill file, you know, in a matter of two and a half, three minutes. So, um, so the connectivity between Pyware and UDB is absolutely the fastest way to share that information. And that's the part when they either need the, that, that Wi-Fi or cellular opportunity to bring in that data to the, to the app on, the, on their device. Yeah, just for that split second, you know, uh, again, just downloading a file is, you know, it's like I said, it's the equivalent of somebody texting you a picture. Uh, so it's very, very small. Okay. And, uh, and again, with this session, we're, we're really talking about the instructor point of view, instructor point of view and the setup point of view. Next hour, we'll really, really focus on the student point of view. Uh, what's your... I mean, is the director on the, at the tower or in the stands, are they usually using a laptop, uh, an iPad? The, the bigger, the better. They bring in their laptops out and all that type of stuff. You know, right. Pulling up the pickup truck. Uh, right. What's the, the projector? Thing? Uh, because, right. I mean, as a director, we look, we're looking at the, that macro concept quite a bit. So uh, what's the best device uh, people are using or what do you recommend? Yeah, so um, one of the things that's great about the way that UDB works is that if you sign into an account, uh, sign into your, an account, your account on your iPad, whatever changes you make on the iPad also show up on your iPhone, right? Um, and so for me, when I'm teaching and what I see most teachers do is that if they're sort of above or in front of the band, normally teaching on some kind of a tablet, you know, iPad or an Android tablet, whatever it might be. Um, now, my sort of pro tip is I love to teach from my iPad on the tower because it's easy. It just sits on a music stand and I've got every, everything I need there, including my sheet music, which I'll show you very, very quickly in a second. But when I teach from the field, right, because sometimes I'll need to come down to the field and help the students maybe realize a certain pathway or maybe there's something that they're just not seeing that I'm, you know, aware of. And so when I'm on the field, I teach from my phone. And the custom views that I've set up for my phone when I teach on the field are all from the student's perspective. Because oftentimes I'm gonna stand next to the student and then help them realize that, that information. Okay. So, so, so tablet and, and phone work, but oftentimes we're seeing directors with tablets in, in front of the band. Is there any time that you're using the laptop or you're at a desktop with this? Um, no, so UDB app is strictly just a mobile application. I keep my laptop close by in case I need to make drill rewrites on the fly. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. 
Hey, Josh, we are at about 10-2. Uh, it's up to you if you wanted to uh, take that uh, like a 10-minute break and start it at 4 o'clock for the next session. Or if you want, I think you mentioned you wanted one more thing that's kind of a director uh, view. It's up to you. Yeah, so let me see. Um, well, actually, actually it'll, what will probably be better is I can send you um, maybe an email that has a list to all of our tutorials, which shows like how to sync your music um, to UDB app, uh, which is what I would show you, but I don't wanna rush too much through that. So I'll send you that so that maybe you can send it out to everybody who's who's on the call and they can they can reference that on their own. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll support you 100% on, on those tutorials. I'll even say uh, I've had my hands on those tutorials and the great thing about them is they're all short for us <laughs> with, uh, with attention deficit disorder. It's it's a quick and easy way to do it. You don't have to sit there for five minutes and figure out what's going on. So I, I, kudos to you for putting those together. So, <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you. Also, uh, uh, another plug on Facebook. Uh, definitely like uh, UDB on Facebook. Uh, because he posts these and other updates and conversations and when he's giving out more um, uh, presentations uh, uh, on Facebook Live and such like that. So it's a great way to learn more about it, it, which is one way I've learned even more about it as well. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Um, uh, just in closing, <clears throat> we'll make sure that you guys get the, the links to the tutorials. Um, and certainly if you have any questions or if you would like a free trial of UDB app for you, for your section leaders, for your band, we can do that and just open it up completely for free for a couple of weeks. Just send me an email, josh at ultimatedrillbook.com and uh, we'll get you set up. Sounds good. So, okay, Josh, just, I'll, I'll let you, you know, take a stretch there, uh, get a glass of water, do whatever you have to do. We'll take a nine minute commercial break here just to stretch. And we will be back at four o'clock for our last session with Josh. And uh, we're gonna look at this uh, from a student point of view and how to really understand how effective it can be uh, from a student. As a director, it's also a great opportunity to realize how, what your students are looking at, how, what they're dealing with, because uh, you're gonna probably get the questions uh, uh, what they're seeing and how they're using it. So uh, it'll be really informative. So we'll see you guys back here in about eight minutes.